In this video, I'm gonna be reanimating the Berserk 2016 anime, which is one of the worst anime adaptations of all time to what is considered the best manga. And this is me about to find out why it's so horrible. Oh my God! Why did why did the sword sound like that? It sounded like a f***ing frying pan. Look at him, bro. What have they done to you, man? I can actually say with confidence that this is an unforgivable sin. So I'm gonna be challenging myself to reanimate a scene better than the anime, which is made by an entire studio all by myself. And you guys are gonna be the ones who decide whether or not I pulled it off. This is what I'm gonna reanimate. I think I could pull it off. I immediately got to work and started working on the CG background that was going to use on this project. This was my first time making a forest scene in Blender and honestly, I did not expect to face as many crashes as I did. Bruh. I did some digging and apparently it's because of the number of polygons in the trees. It was actually insane. But either way, I got it done and I'm impressed with how it came out, especially when you take into account my previous works. I then moved on to planning out the entire animation and storyboard. Since I'm remaking and animating the 2016 anime, I kind of want to take the best aspects from the anime and combine it with the manga to make it a little bit more accurate and a little bit better. I don't think I'll be using the anime much, but let's just pretend I might. By the way, I had a lot of people ask me in my last video what software I used to animate i use clip studio paint you guys should check it out i put a link in the description it has never failed me after i finished drawing up the storyboard i moved all the images into milanote who is also the sponsor of today's video milanote is a tool designed for organizing creative projects and i'm going to be using it today to properly organize and plan out this animation this is the main project board where i laid out the storyboard for both sequences i also made two extra subboards for inspiration if you were to click on the manga references i put the panels from the manga of the scene i want to reanimate and did the same thing for the anime references subboard which will allow me to take the best aspects of the two for inspiration the cool thing about milano is how much freedom you get when organizing your projects due to the numerous ways you could do it i personally did it by importing the storyboard images into the unsorted tab made a couple of columns and dragged the images in there i also added a little caption in the last image of each column to kind of tell me what it is i'm looking at or if i have a specific idea in which i want to approach creating said scene i can easily write it there for later doing it this way kept everything organized organized, neat, and gave me a good visual representation of my project, which really goes a long way. You can even use Milanote's free web extension, Web Clipper, to import images into your boards. For example, you could go to Google Images and you will see the little Milanote icon. You click on it and it saves the images or websites to the board of your choosing. Same thing with articles or anywhere you could find images, really. It's that easy. I chose to do it this way, but there's also over 100 built-in templates that you can choose from for every type of creative project. So if you actually go ahead and make a new board right here you make a new board you go into it in the bottom right you get greeted with this little pop-up in which you could choose whichever template you want if you want a mood board you click on this and you have nice little template you could go ahead and change the images as you like emotion design storyboard so kind of what i did i could have just used this template i'm not gonna lie it's actually the exact same thing i did <laughs> like it's it's dope it has a lot of really cool templates milano also has a mobile app where you can work on your boards and gather inspiration wherever you go and if you're working with a team or a client you can share your work to gather feedback and collaborate with them in real time. Milano is available for free with no time limit. You can sign up for a free Milano account using the link in the description and pinned comment. With the plan completely laid out, I started animating. For the first cut, I started off by taking a picture of the approximate angle of the background so I can accurately place Erica in the composition. Um, okay, I think this kind of looks like the right angle more or less. Let me actually adjust this a little more. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Oh yeah, this is... Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I should kind of paint this a little bit because it looks super CGI. But for now, I'm just going to start drawing this thing right here. And then we could think about the background later. I first fixed up the storyboard sketch. Then when I zoomed out and saw the entire canvas, I noticed that the background was in a totally different angle than what I had planned. So I went back to Blender to get the right camera angle and then I continued to draw. Okay, I think that looks pretty good right now. Once I put it on compositing, it's going to look a lot better, but it doesn't look that bad. Maybe with a little bit of smoke and with the color 
color correction, all that good stuff, and like, you know, extra lighting. Yeah, that looks fine. The idea behind Cut 2 is I just wanted Erica to cut the wooden stick in a fast movement without much buildup. And since size and shape in solid objects is difficult to animate consistently, especially in swords, axes, machetes, etc., I'll be using a technique where I trace the machete in the onion skin from the previous frame to keep the machete consistent in size and shape. Sure, you could technically copy and paste it, but I don't really like when it looks too perfect. I think tracing with slight imperfections gives a more organic and anime-like appearance. For cut 3, I drew the basket with a bunch of sticks and animated the stick being thrown in. I used the same tracing technique so that the stick doesn't change in length or width, and to create the illusion of gravity, I eased in the fall, making it look pretty believable. There's a couple of ways you can approach animating something like in cut 4. What I did to avoid having to redraw Erica's entire body over and over again was to separate what wouldn't be moving, so the lower half of the body, the basket with sticks, and her head. In a separate layer, I animated the movements of the upper body. I animated her wiping the sweat off her forehead and then putting her hands to her face and opening her mouth a bit for the next cut. And finally, I made her blink to add a little bit of realism. My idea with this, I'm going to draw the face and all that separate, and then I'm going to draw the hands on a different layer. And when she's like breathing out and then you see like the cold like breath, what's it? What's that even called? Editor's note, I called it cold breath for the rest of the video, but apparently it's called exhaled breath condensate. I know all these geeks were getting ready to type out an essay in my comment section. Um, actually, it's exhaled breath condensate. I don't care. I'm gonna export that, put that in After Effects, and I'm gonna move it so I don't have to like animate like her head moving. And then I'm gonna export the hands in a different layer. I'm getting confused just talking about it. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I did just that. I originally animated the blink without an in-between frame when she first closed her eyes, but I didn't like how it looked. So I added a couple of frames in between to make the blink slower, and I matched up her mouth opening the same way. This creates the movement of breathing in and breathing out that I wanted. The rest, like I mentioned, is going to be handled in the compositing. Cut 6 was next, and in the anime, you can't even see the snow falling on her nose. Like, yeah, if you're paying attention, but it kind of just lands there and disappears instantly. Whereas in the manga, you can clearly see it. It's right there. This cut features a simple head looking up movement. I was originally going to make her blink, but I feel as if I made her blink a couple of times already. So I thought it wouldn't be necessary for this cut. Then I noticed that the hands I drew weren't quite right. So I just kept on redrawing them and redrawing them, but I just couldn't get it right. So to make my life easier, I pulled out a 3D model from Clip Studio Paint's assets and I properly positioned it, which allowed me to draw the hand in the perfect angle. Thank God for technology, honestly, because what the f I then animated the snow falling on her nose and added it to every frame afterwards. Then I moved on to cut seven, which is the final cut of the sequence. And it's just a still frame. I kind of drew her mouth a little too open because I was trying to make it look like the manga. It actually looks terrible. So I came back later and changed it. And just like that, the animation for sequence one was done. But as I was looking back at the animation cuts I made, I couldn't help but realize how even though Berserk 2016 does not look good in anime standards, I feel as if it looks more polished than my own work. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's just my mind playing tricks, kind of like how you see yourself as less attractive when you look in the mirror and other people see you as like 20% more attractive. I don't know. I'm having a little bit of doubt in myself, but it's okay. I just got to keep on moving forward. I don't know if I can actually make it better than the original, but I'm just going to focus on making it the best I can. And you know, at the end of the day, it's all right. I got to keep it going. So I then moved on to the second sequence. And the first thing I did for cut one was more or less sketch out the basic shapes of the entire animation. After I did that, I drew all of Erica's features, the clothing, etc. Finally, I cleaned up the animation, colored it in and shaded it. The second cut features a cinematic zoom out. I started off by drawing full body images of both Guts and Erica. And since I want to make a cool cinematic zoom out with the camera moving and stuff, I went into Blender, went to preferences and enabled import images as planes. I then imported both PNGs and placed them where I wanted them to be. Finally, I keyframed the camera zoom out animation and added depth of field with the focus being on guts. So everything else looks slightly blurred out. Bro, after I do the compositing on this shot, it's actually going to look so good. Oh my God. Cut three is basically just a drawing of a really detailed eye. You know, the inspiration for this is obviously Attack on Titan. I think it adds a lot to the subtle fear that Erica felt when she first saw guts. By the way, I made all the details on the eye with a hairbrush I downloaded from the Clip Studio Asset Store thing. It surprisingly works really well. <laughs> for the final cut, I went straight to the cleanup. I basically used the storyboard as the sketch and then I just animated the mouth from there. I then added shading and a bit of dirt on his face because prior to this, he was in a huge battle, which the anime fails to emphasize. But you know, that's expected at this point. After that, all the animating was done and it was time to move on to the compositing. 
Since the background here looks too out of place, I duplicated the background layer, added some camera lens blur, and masked it out so it's only behind Erica, which gives this shot a lot more depth. I then added a smoke overlay to make it look like there's fog in the environment. And finally, I added a light source and a lens flare on the machete. I did the same thing for the background of Cut 2. I used this OLM color key plugin, which helped me separate the colors and allowed me to add this cool sort of shadowy look to the edges of the character, which adds more three-dimensionality and makes it more interesting to look at. If you were to go ahead and pretty much watch any anime in 2024, you'll see the same exact effect. And now you won't be able to unsee it. <laughs> the last thing I did was I had the lens flare of the machete get really bright on impact and then added a subtle camera shake. For this cut, I want to make it look like she's inhaling and exhaling. So in order to get that effect, I moved her head back a couple of frames and moved her head forward a little bit. I pre-composed Erica and added posturized time and changed the frame rate to 8 FPS to make it look more animated. I then masked out the smoke I'm using in the background and keyframed the opacity to show her cold breath. The rest of the cuts didn't really feature anything special in terms of compositing. I played a lot with the camera blur and the lighting of the cuts to make this project look as good as possible. I put all the compositions into the Vinci Resolve for some color grading to add consistency consistency between the clips and to make them look better. I gotta say, after compositing everything, this project started coming together and the doubts I had started to fade away. So I decided to waste no time and I moved on to the audio portion of this project. My original plan was just to straight up use the audio from the anime and make no changes, but I decided it would be a better idea to do everything myself. I first isolated the vocals I wanted to use from the music and ambient sounds, then I aligned them with my animation. I found the exact OST used in the anime for the sequence on YouTube and added my own sound effects, like the snow falling and the footsteps for Erica running. Actually, the footsteps are just a hair scratching sound effect. When you scratch your hair, it makes the same exact sound as when you're running on grass. It's kind of weird. Try it out right now. For the machete scene where Erica cuts the stick, I added my own whooshes and slicing effects because I didn't like how the original one sounded. I went back to After Effects, lip sync guts, and imported that cut back into the Vinci. I also included some extra OST from the same soundtrack that wasn't used in the anime, which I think fits really well. Hopefully, I don't get copyrighted. Please don't copyright me. If you're an independent animator, do not underestimate just how much sound design and compositing can uplift your animations. And just like that, the animation is finished. I ended up learning a lot of new things, especially on the CG side, and also picked up a couple new tricks during the compositing. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you for all the support as of late. The growth has been absolutely ridiculous, but uh, yeah, this is the final product. Yo, ちょっと背が伸びたんじゃねえか。<laughs>